Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I'm back for another round of casts. We're actually going to have a double feature today. I've got two relatively short but pretty awesome games with some different stuff happening. I don't really have a good descriptor to fit in there. Interesting, wildly abnormal, however you care to look at it. Got some good games for you. So, first one up is on the Pyramid. Now, this is a very popular team game map. I don't know that I necessarily have to explain everything about it. Most people are going to be familiar with it. We've got large piles of reclaim near the bases that all of these guys can dive directly into, giving you the option of either building tons of land factories and getting your spam up or teching. Most, most people choose teching and then the map overall is an awesome mixture of open battlefields and tons of little avenues of access through the center can't really have a point defense war so it forces spam and it makes for epic gameplay let's go ahead and introduce the players and then we will jump straight into this and see what they have in store for us on the northern side we have clinch taking uef Akinabis, I think that is, yes, taking Seraphim. And we've got Keezer as Cyber and Air, and then another Seraphim on the front for OK Puck. On the southern team, we have Flash taking Seraphim. Silver Kronos as UEF and Hellcat as Aeon for the front guard, and then another Cyber and Air. Laser EQ, Laser Wreck, wrecking you with lasers. I think that might be the way that that is supposed to be pronounced taking the air slot there. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay and see where it takes us. Looks like, as usual, everybody's building engineers and rushing the Hydra, which is basically what you should always do on this map every time. Your storage technically contains enough to build four mechs and a Hydra, but when you have three mechs and a Hydra assisted with your ACU, that leaves you a little bit more of a power buffer to, oh, clicked on somebody on the other side of the map. A little bit more of a power buffer to get your next couple of generators online. Here, Silver Kronos actually did build a T1 generator to begin with. Let's go look over here at Hellcat to see how his eco is sitting. There we go. So that's where you want to be. Balanced eco perfectly. Looks like we've got land for everybody on the southern side and on the north we do have land everywhere but we've got two air factories going down. Typically there will be a lot of Tech 1 air from the rear and then a little bit, if any, from the other guys, but it looks like we do have a functioning air factory there and lots of land planned for Aknibus. Let's see, where is his factory build queue? Yes, that is all land factories. And a walk forward for OK Puck, who is just about done with the Tech 2 mass extractor upgrade. These rocks at the front here contain basically enough mass for a T2 upgrade without any major fuss. And since he's got two of these that he's locking down, he's going to go ahead and upgrade three at a time. And actually balance his eco fairly well from what I saw before. Yes, he is doing very fine indeed. What are we pinging here? We've got a transport going out. That was a ping from an air scout that passed by it. And we do have bombers coming out for Clinch. Actually, it looks like he's producing bombers quite regularly. He's got two in the air already. And he is building a transport, which is a bit of an odd thing to see. Typically, your air players will build transports. There, we've got one right there. And one that's already dropping on the mesas up here. The mesas cannot be accessed from the ground. You can't build land factories up there. You can't really build anything up there. So you've either got to snag it with a drone or you need to get it with an engineer drop from a transport, which is what we're seeing happen here. Both of those bombers are going to get shot down. And then on the right hand side, we do have the transport continuing on its way from Kieser. I'm going to drop an engineer on each of these mass extractors and then probably the remaining ones over here for this expansion, which is actually pretty handy for the air to have. If the air doesn't get it, typically one side or the other, the land player will secure this, but the eco advantage is always phenomenal when you're playing air. It allows you to tech up quicker, hit T3 air faster, and then turn out an experimental very early in the game. So if you can lock down all these extra mass extractors, it does wonders for your overall game. Of course, you know, that was probably the most predictable thing I've ever said because more mass is better. Whoever complained about having more mass? I mean, that, that just isn't the thing. Okay. More bombers in production. We've got two chilling out up here and then an interceptor building. Looks like we've got interceptors for red. And 
not much else going on here. I'm about to have a little bit of a confrontation in the middle, but not anything to be overly concerned about. A couple of tanks here are going to spot that ACU and run for the hills, which is the honorable thing to do. Better not to lose any tanks that you don't have to. And this expansion looks like it's going to be secure for Keezer. As far as Eco and Eco goes, OK Puck is the king at the moment. He has 37 mass per tick incoming, along with the highest power production. So kudos to him. That was actually kind of an odd thing to see. Typically, your air will be higher. Uh, take a run down the reclaim here, just out of curiosity's sake. Looks like we've got around three to four K for most of these guys. Yes, that is a correct observation. There is quite a bit of reclaim scattered around this map. Once you get done with your reclaim that's in the base, you can of course go out here and reclaim all of these rocks, and typically there will be a fight in the middle over those. Looks like we have our first air engagement over here on the left. There was a tiny little spat, not a whole lot done over there, and pink is going to run away. But yellow, actually all four players on the southern side are building air. I see pink, maroon, gray, and yellow. There is a huge quantity of interceptors on the field. That is actually kind of frightening because when you win air that hard, oh, there's an engineer drop. It's going to go absolutely nowhere because the Mantis are on the case. When you lose air this hard, that means that there are bombers and snipes in your future. It is an inevitable consequence. So I'm wondering how this game is going to turn out. Here's the brave little fam that could. Running over here to kill off an engineer and that mass extractor accompanied by a Selen. And it looks like it's going to score a couple more kills on these engineers. Going to run away slightly because three engineers is actually enough, I think, to get in range and reclaim a tank if it doesn't move before it can kill all three engineers. Tech 2 gunships in production for Hellcat, which is quite frankly absurd. I don't think I've ever seen anyone rush T2 air in a land position on pyramids. That is something completely new to me. And we've got bomber spam galore coming from Flash. He is building bombers like a madman out of this Tech 2 air factory. Not sure why he's building Tech 1 bombers. Perhaps he is trying to go for an ECU snipe and Tech 1 bombers do have a higher damage concentration than Tech 2. Tech 1 has more than Tech 2. I'm not sure if I was exactly clear on what I was saying there. So we've got point defense going down over here that is going to finish just in time. And all of those tanks are going to stop in range, so that tech one point defense is going to happily hammer away at all of them. Bye bye tanks. Tech two gunships coming over are going to try clearing some of this land out. This position here is relatively vulnerable. It's got a couple of tech one point defense, but there are Zooies in the mix here. That is going to take out that point defense no problemo. It's up to the gunships to deal with that because there aren't really any land units up front. There's a little bit here, but not much. Got an ACU dropping to the side. Flash is going to continue moving forward. He needs to be very careful because there are a lot of interceptors on the map. Turquoise up here. Clinch has started producing. Oh my goodness, two ACUs. Are we about to have an ACU drop? That is the question here. Yes, we are. They are dropping in the air player's base on the opposite side, accompanied by gunships. What on earth is the plan here? Holy cow, this is risky. If they can manage to kill the air player, this will be basically an instant win. If they cannot, oh, oh, holy cow, that was close. If those interceptors had been targeted, they would have killed that Tech 2 transport. That just barely hit the ground. Silver Kronos is in. He has Tech 2 on his commander, as does Flash. They're immediately going to start throwing down point defense. Got a Tech 1 that's going to start hammering away at all the build power. And then a Tech 2 to get some range on it. Start hitting over here. Keezer is putting down Tech 2 point defense of his own. But the Seraphim Tech 2 point defense is far, far stronger. Trying to see if there's any, nope, there is no possibility of mercies. There's not even an Aeon on the Northern team. That is bad, that is very bad. All of the land spam is extended at the moment, but due to focusing this much eco over here, is Keezer gonna die? I think Keezer's gonna die. We are having land penetration over here. Yes, Keezer is down. That is a gut-wrenching feeling 
when you get ganged up on in that manner. These two ACUs are immediately going to make a mad dash for the other base. There's a Tech 2 factory over here that they need to kill. Get rid of that HQ. And it looks like there's enough gunships coming online now to deal with this mess. Hellcat is transporting back. I didn't see him drop. They were prepared for three ACUs to go to ground. I'm not sure if he landed anywhere. I'm sure you guys could see the ACU icon on the minimap. I don't think he accomplished anything too terribly critical. Gunships and ACU are going to easily clean up that mess. Flash and Silver Chronos teaming up to lay down some Tech 2 point defense in the northern side. And I think this game is as good as one just like that. T2 gunship snipe going down on Akinibus. Akinibus, whatever. I cannot pronounce that name. Corsair is coming in for a little piece of the pie. And kaboom. All of the air goes bye-bye. But you know what? The ACU died too. So it's all okay. That leaves two commanders to kill. One is right here, and relatively exposed. That's going to be an easy snipe for some more Tech 2 gunships. That is just an ungodly amount of Tech 2 gunships. My goodness. And Gray is at the front. There might be a chance if he could build some mobile flak, but I don't know if that's going to be an option at this point. Clinch is valiantly attempting to throw down some rail guns, but that is just not going to be enough against this many Tech 2 and there he goes. Last one is Gray. It's just a matter of time until he meets with his team in the afterlife. Well, that was definitely a different game. Had a quadruple air push. Heavy interceptor production. Once they secured air control, start building T2 gunships, Tech 1 bombers, all kinds of attack units like MAD. Secure your air control, drop your ACUs in the back of the base. Very risky move, but it it did pay out this time. I'm very impressed with the teamwork and coordination on that. These guys did a brilliant job, and they deserve all the kudos for today because they managed to pull off a very brilliant piece of teamwork. Not many, I, I don't know, these guys may have been in Mumble. I would not be surprised if they were in Mumble. Typically, a random assortment of players will not pull off a move like that. It was very fun to watch, though. And just need to wait for that last ACU kill. He did throw down a ton- oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Of course. You got to make graffiti on the map once you think you're losing. And can't type out a GG, but oh well. Some people think that's funny. Um, <laughs> apparently these guys are not content with the amount of real estate that they already have. They decided that, uh, you know what, we want these guys' bases. We're just going to drop over here and start building our own stuff. And claim all this mass for ourselves and pinch the last ACU in between two undefeatable armies. Or something of the sort. I don't know. Hellcat's actually taking fire from a lone Notha. There's a second Notha out, but the amount of interceptors that are about to come down upon the head of this base, I don't think it's really going to matter much. ACU is... <laughs> oh, the level of detail in this picture is disturbing. Uh, we all know what he thinks of this team strategy, that is for sure. Gunships are going to go down to these Tech 1 anti-air turrets. Hellcat's going to be joined by Silver Kronos and a load of Lobos. It's going to easily wreck the rest of this base. Not much chance that this is going to succeed, laying down as many Tech 1 point defenses as he, as he can. Probably hoping that Hellcat will just randomly wander into reach of more than one point defense and just die. But you know, occasionally some people will do that. It's not unheard of. I'm gonna bump up the speed on this a bit so that we can see this last ACU death and then we will bail. <laughs> Still working on his mural here. He's gonna finish up one half with the engineer and try to get the rest built with his ACU before his uh, artwork can be destroyed. No! Here come the gunships and bombers, and there goes the ACU. That is game, everybody, and quite the hilarious one at that.
Thank you to Hellcat for sending that over to me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Alrighty guys, I'm going to cut out right here and I will be back in just a second with the other game. And we're back with a very different game. The first game was a whole lot of hilarity and some oddball circumstances. And this game is going to be a kind of more technical game. We've got a one versus one on the Bermuda Locket, which is actually a map that I have only played twice, I think. And we're going to watch two really high rated players play on it. And hopefully we can dissect everything they're doing, get some good game pointers out of it, and hopefully have a good time with it. Now, I've noticed that Zlow has actually been playing a lot more recently, and I watched a tiny piece of this game on his stream the other day. And now we'll get to see this out of both perspectives, um, not just out of his perspective. And hopefully we can see a little bit more of the game and what all was going on. As before mentioned, Zlo is in this in the top left corner, and I'm tangling up my words. Let me get my thoughts straight here. He is going UEF, and he's pushing out two mech marines to begin with, and then an engineer, no scouts, and he's going to go for a second land factory as well. Kieser is his opponent. He's going Cybern, and he's going Triple Air after a land factory and building a humongo gargantuan amount of power generators because there are no hydros on this map at all. What there is, is a lot of reclaim. You can see all of these rocks, one, two, three, and then even these back in the hills and these out in the water, all of these are reclaimable and there is just a huge amount of mass available. So this is gonna allow for some superior teching I would bet on early navy and you actually have two choices on this map. You can go into the water in the middle and bombard everything from in here or you can go into the water outside. And really it's about the same effect no matter which one you do because navy can reach pretty much the whole map from inside or outside. Whichever area has the higher naval presence you can actually get a little bit of uh, protection either from these cliffs right here which are better but ships can still fire past them on the sides here or if there is intruding navy in the bay you can build behind those cliffs over there and that will help obstruct some destroyer fire and maybe protect your units for a little longer and there's some ridges out this way as well so really interestingly built map lots of narrow choke points I don't know how much land spam we'll actually see we we'll just have to kind of see how it goes and watch what they do. The main reason that I like maps like this, to watch the higher rated players play maps like this, is because they come up with creative solutions. I spawn into a map like this and I have no idea what to do at all. I would not have built two mech marines. And honestly, when Zlo built those to begin with, I thought he was insane. But as you can see, these mech marines have actually made their way most of the way around the map and inevitably they will meet with an engineer on one side or the other. Actually, I thought this one might have a chance of stopping this drop right here that's coming in, but it is going to carry on its merry way and the vision did not intersect that to see where it was going. So Kieser is gonna try to get a head start on an expansion over here, claim these three mass extractors, some of that reclaim and build up some land forces to start attacking Zlow. And Zlow is casually expanding at the pace of a walking engineer, or rolling in this case because it's UEF. Actually, I think all the engineers either roll or float. So there would be no engineers walking, unless it's an ACU. Moving on from that random observation, we have a Tech 1 bomber coming out for over here. And this is one of the main things that I have trouble with. Balancing aggression with expansion. And... You can see, well, here we go, Mech Marine is actually going to lose to that engineer because Kieser was watching very closely on all of his things. We have another lab down here that's probably going to succeed in taking out this mass extractor, but there will soon be a Mantis on the case and it will be stopped in its walk of mayhem. Um, Kieser is expanding in an aggressive manner. He's gotten engineers out, he's building mass extractors, but he threw down three factories and he's actually got an advanced land force, which will allow him to safely expand into this arm without having to worry about 
a lot of tanks or things bypassing and coming in here. He does have one that's bypassed, but he will be able to take care of it relatively easily. Zlow is building bombers. Now he doesn't have quite as much air, so he won't be able to protect them very well, but hopefully he will be able to snipe off any expanding engineers that he sees. And because all the interceptors are kind of, uh, well, no, I thought they were going after the bomber and he would shoot down more than that, but he did not. Three more interceptors joining the party and the air forces are actually relatively even. Bomber's going to go down, still got a tank and two scouts here, and not much to deny though. Alright, we've got an engineer crossing the water. It is going to edge build a factory right there, and then we have the same thing over here. Not quite adjacent to that mass extractor. Let's check in here. We've got three, four air factories for Zlow, four naval factories, and five land factories. He is just factorying it up. That was an odd conglomeration of syllables. Already pulled in 6k reclaim, barely balancing out his power, and has a lot of mass. Actually has some mass to spare. And there's the power stall. No! That is the one thing that you do not want to have happen. Hopefully he can get that balanced out relatively quickly. It is not for lack of building power. It is because he has reclaimed so much mass. He cannot burn it all off with the amount of power that he has. Keezer has a little bit more power that is being produced and an equal amount of reclaim-ish. Pushing over 4k but increasing quite steadily and he is balanced in eco. He did not expand quite as much. This may be one of the reasons that he's a little behind on reclaim, but he does have way more tanks at the moment. So he is going to be able to crush out some of these expansions that Zlow has. This is actually slightly worrisome. He definitely doesn't want to get his ACU tangled up because he will not be able to run to water. There is a cliff. His ACU will not be able to get away, so he needs to protect it. Well, I was about to say he needs to protect it with his life, but the ACU is his life, so he needs to protect his life. Something like that. So we have a frigate rush. Zlo was able to get four frigates out, and he's building subs now. And those are going to cross over, easily kill off the navy that Keezer has, but he really doesn't want to project his navy in here. You might say, well, why didn't he sit there and kill the factories? Because there's an ACU there, which can build torp launchers, has, of course, the build power of two A. Uh, two Tech 1 Engineers and is also indestructible from frigates because it's under the water and it can also reclaim the frigates fairly quickly. Uh, the build power on the ACU makes it a pretty good tool for that. Especially if you have a Tech 2 ACU. People don't realize that if you're in the water with a bunch of frigates, if there was a frigate rush and your build power has been killed off, if you start reclaiming with a T2 ACU you can reclaim a frigate in just a couple of seconds. Really awesome thing that you can do to try to save yourself. We do have the land factory down, but unfortunately it did not build anything. This engineer is going to reclaim it, the hero engineer defending his territory, but we do have another expansion factory over on this cliff. Maybe this one will be a little more successful, I do not know. Frigates piling up on the shore, trading blows with any units that dare pass, mostly air, and looks like pretty much complete naval domination by Zlow. But we do have a lot of build power on this factory here, and this is going Tech 2, so we're actually going to see Tech 2 Navy in the center by 10 minutes. Pretty dang speedy. Looks like Zlow is getting a Tech 2 upgrade as well. He's going to need Coopers at some point in this game, because I have no doubt that Keezer is going to try to exploit sub hunters in order to regain naval dominance. He does not want to let Zlow get any cruisers out. Because if Zlow gets a cruiser out, he will be able to wreck lots of stuff. And let me see the air control situation here. It looks like Zlow actually does have more inters. Well, no, we got two piles here for Keezer. Looks like the amount of interceptors is about the same. But a single cruiser in a Tech 1 air stage can completely change the layout of the airscape. It is kind of frustrating when you get a cruiser, or when your opponent gets a cruiser out rather, and just undoes everything that you've been trying to do. And my prediction is accurate, we do have a sub hunter going down. And there are two tech one subs here and a buttload of frigates. Once that tech two sub comes out though, that is 
going to start causing problems up here. The main thing that you do not want to have happen, Slow does not want to leave a pile of reclaim in this bay. Because if he does, that is going to decisively turn the tide in Keezer's favor because naval reclaim is worth a bunch. And you'll notice that most of the rocks have already been picked clean. These are actually not rocks. Those are funky looking plant things. Gorbs maybe? Shrooms? They're giant shrooms if they are shrooms. If you ever looked at the subcom scale, a mech marine is actually gargantuan compared to a human. And so, compared to a Tech 1 engineer, yeah, those are going to be like 30 feet tall. <laughs> Let's carve the world's largest jack-o'-lantern. I think that is the answer to what we need to do here. Tech 1 bombers all over the place for Zlow. Zlow has been cleaning up with these, preventing uh, there's going to be another engineer death there in the very new fu near future, I think. This is ideal for Tech 1 bombers. When you have this many units clumped up together, if you can land two or three bombers there, there's going to be a whole bunch of unit deaths. And the bomb has landed. Expansioneer is down. It's going to leave three bombers intact. And I think air control may actually be tipping in favor of Keezer. It looks like Keezer's air production is just a tiny bit higher, and some of Zlo's air production is actually going to bombers got t2 land online that is going to be pillar production it's going to be streaming down to the left hand side so many pillars he is going to need that advantage versus these swarms of mantis because there is a lot of mantis here i mean that is a terrifying swarm when you're in front of it that is more than enough to kill an acu possibly a t2 acu and the only hope that Zlo has of defending this is to use a superior range of the pillars. And actually, the pillars are faster than Mantis, too. This is three speed. Well, no. What is the Mantis? Two points. Maybe the same ish. They're both relatively speedy units. He's going to need to kite with these, though. Although the T1 bombers are definitely helping the situation. I think. My personal opinion here is that Keezer actually invested too much into Tech 1 spam because he built all of these Tech 1 units and did not... Ah, that was actually a valiant effort. I forgot to come back and check on this. I see a Lobo and some dead Mexus, so it was mildly successful at best. And then Mantis. So yes, that is dealt with quite thoroughly. Looks like those were the Lobos. So that was six mechs down. Relatively good amount of damage, actually, for one factory. That is very respectable. Nicely done. So we do have Tech 2 out now. We've got a Cooper and a Destroyer that's going to start plugging away at some of these other mass extractors. Back here on the left, we do see that some of the pillars have gone down, but for the most part, the Mantis Swarm is stopped. As I was saying before, keys are, I think, over-invested into Tech 1 because you can see these swarms of Tech 1, which become less and less effective versus Tech 2 units as the number of Tech 2 units go up. Holy cow, that's a large chunk of air gone. And then we're going to see the T2 subs make their debut on the field, going to murder the ever-living daylights out of that torpedo launcher and then start chasing back all of these frigates doing damage as they go. We got a torpedo bomber out for slow. That is going to help out tremendously as long as he can protect it, keep that thing from dying. We got interceptors on the move from both sides. Looks like we're finally going to get an air engagement. We have to see how it goes on this. Tech 1 bomber is still shredding these mantis over here little by little. Engineers push to the front to reclaim. We're waiting on this air battle to start. Let's go ahead and check. Keezer is ahead by far in mass because he has a ton of map control. 21,000 reclaim for his low 61 income, and then 20,000 reclaim with 95 income for Keezer. That is a brutal advantage. Zlo is looking a tiny bit pinned down at the moment. Keezer doing a very good job of recouping his expansions and making sure that everything is well defended. This naval advantage 
going away for his load is going to hurt quite a bit. This destroyer, ah, here we go. This is what I was talking about earlier with the cliffs protecting you from destroyer fire. As long as you have a cliff in between you and the boats, you are going to be fine, my friends. The size difference between Tech 1 and Tech 2 is not as much as you would think it would be. And the torpedo bomber still happily hammering away at this navy. Actually, I think that's the second torpedo bomber. The first one probably, yes, got shot down. There is torpedo bomber production going on. Interceptors moving over to the left to try and kill off these Tech 1 bombers. This is not going to end well. There's a flak. Oh, put the brakes on. Brilliant dodge. Saw it with these couple of leading interceptors and backed the hell up. Flak running forward to try and land some hits on these interceptors. They're actually going to get down on the ground. And now the tanks are firing at them because Flak no longer can ambush. Interceptors coming into the air and kaboom! Laying waste. That was about a quarter of the interceptors in that one bunch that got shot down. You can see Zlow had not even a third of the interceptors. And thanks to a single skyboxer, actually came out pretty even. I was about to say he won, but the interceptors are spread out now, so they're not taking concentrated flak fire. That was a brilliantly positioned flak. I love it. Up here on the northern front, we have a single Cooper versus a whole lot of Tech 2 subs. And this is probably not going to end well for the Cooper because we do have a Salem. That is going to cause some major problems. There's the shield boat, though. That is going to provide some extra health as long as the frigates don't get underneath it. They're almost underneath it as it is. And it's going to buy some time. Another Cooper coming out. Or is that the same one? I think that's the same one. Yes, it is. Cooper is down. That means there are now Tech 2 subs that are free to come in and pillage the base. Tech 2 units on the left-hand side moving forward now. Keezer is definitely not hurting for Eco. He's up to 109 per tick, even after losing both of these expansions. He's probably, yes, he's teching up mass extractors in his home base. He's got a lot of Tech 2 mass extractors down here. The lack of Tech 1 spam and then pushing a lot of Tech 2 is helping out Zlow because the Tech 2, once you get a critical mass, is going to just demolish Tech 1, hands down, no contest. You're packing way more damage potential into a small surface area and that is going to just own any group of Mantis. So this is actually paying off for Zlow. Keezer, it hurt because he wasted a lot of mass on that Tech 1 that is now just being flayed by Tech 2. This is a whole lot of point defense. I don't think I've ever seen anyone build that many Tech 1 point defense in the same spot unless it was guarding against teleporting. But you know what? When you got a bunch of cliffs in the way and a bunch of ir irregular terrain and a choke point, you might as well build point defense. It can actually be mass effective at that point. Well, Zlow has started rolling and he just doesn't seem to want to stop. We've still got this horde of pillars trucking on through. This is going to kill off most of the build power that Keezer has. All of his land factories were on this side. There's actually the Tech 2 HQ right there. Zlow needs to take a pause and kill that thing because that needs to die. I don't think there is another Tech 2 HQ that will remove the possibility of pillars you can see the Coopers that have been produced. Coopers and shields, Coopers and shields. Slowly. Well, I was about to say gaining footing, but we have a second destroyer here. It looks like the T2 subs are finally going to go down. Two of them down. Cooper's still alive. Going to kill a third. And these two torpedo defense here are helping tremendously. Salem's coming in, trying to land some hits on that build power. We've got riptides. Hover takes on the way to recover the bay and then it looks like pillars are about to hit the base of Keezer. Let's go ahead and check in on the reclaim again. 26k for Keezer, 34 for Zlow, taking a 10,000 mass reclaim lead in just a couple of minutes. 
very well executed. This is how you want to play. Build up a critical mass of units, advance once, kill off everything, reclaim, and use that reclaim to feed your wave of destruction as it pours across the map. And that's what we're seeing being executed right here. Got gunships moving northward. Is that going to be an attempted snipe? It may be. I don't see any mobile flak. It's looking for the ACUs. Low, you need to get indoors or underwater or something. Or build a flak. Because there's a whole lot of interceptors with that. Oh my, oh dear. Let me kill off the power generators. That is going to force Low into a stall. A very hard stall. 680 in the hole. And going around for the Tech 1 now. There's a cruiser. It's going to start hammering away at the Tech 1 interceptors. And then here comes the flak finally. Two flaks rolling in. I'm going to try to knock all those gunships away. And they're going to be quite successful. Flak always wins versus gunships. Well, maybe not one on one, but there is a mass cost difference to be considered. And there goes the last gunship. Zlow has been hurt, but he has not been killed. He's working to balance his power. He's going to overflow mass for a tick, I think, but that is acceptable considering his situation. He's going to have to get mass online as quickly as possible. Hover tanks and a single destroyer playing the hero. The destroyer is going to stay outside of torpedo range, and the hover tanks are going to... Oh! What? I think that was a control K. I am 98% sure that that was a control K. I'm going to accept it as that because there was nothing even close that could have killed him. Unless it was these Tech 1 Bombers and I really severely doubt that it was Tech 1 Bombers that killed a 1900 player. Alrighty, so that is game. So, this is a technical win. Not the most flashy thing, but there was a ton of really good stuff happening. And I hope everybody can take away the lesson from this. Um, you've got to balance your expansion and aggression. Keezer expanded and was very aggressive in the beginning, but I think he overspent on Tech 1 units, which could not be fully utilized in these choke points because the choke points are too easily defended and when large swarms of tech one units move through it ends up making it where they all run in in a string instead of swarming the position altogether so i think that was somewhat of a bad execution of strategy the amount of the amount of spam that he had versus low would have won in an open map but since he couldn't fully utilize his force at any point in the game because of the choke points, he lost. Zlow, knowing that, went for the more concentrated damage of Tech 2 units for his spam and focused on Navy early game. And that allowed him to keep Keezer from ever really fully exploiting a naval game because Cyber in the early Navy will win if you're 100% dedicated to a Cyber Navy. And that pretty much let Zlow wreck everything once he hit the tipping point where he could push past the defenses of Keezer. Once you kill off that build power and there's no more spam coming in, that is GG. So well done to Zlow. Hopefully everybody learned something and can apply this in some game that they play. And I will catch you guys in the next cast. That is going to wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching. And that is all. See ya.